What's going on internet? IG, back with another video. Today, I'm going to be giving you my first impressions of Ubuntu 18.04 Bionic Beaver. We're in the final beta. It's due April 26th. Today's April 17th as the time of the recording of this video. Let's dive in. Let's have a chat. Where is Ubuntu? Oh, uh, Ubuntu, what the heck? Where is Ubuntu at these days? Right, so here's my story. Checking in with Ubuntu 18.04. This is the first time that I've um, spent decent time in Ubuntu since Ubuntu 16.04, the last long-term support release in April of 2016. So that was the last time that I was running Ubuntu on native hardware. This is not running on native hardware, as you can tell by the atrocious frame rates. Uh, it's in a virtual machine. I'm poking around with the final beta. Uh, and this the idea of this video is for us to have a bit of a chat about where is Ubuntu at these days? Um, why what is it doing? Well, what could it improve? Um, why does it exist? That's my question of the day Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts on that matter is um, I'm gonna try and clip through this video pretty quickly if I can uh, I'm recording this actually a second time because the microphone uh, just screwed up majorly in the last recording and it sounded horrible So hopefully this sounds better Okay, so let's start with what we're presented with first up. The GNOME desktop is what is front and center now with the main desktop release of Ubuntu. Um, I think this overall and long term is a good move. Short term, I think it's going to um, present them with speed bumps or present their user base with speed bumps. One thing that I am very happy to see is that they have tried to alleviate some of these speed bumps by giving excellent, excellent help documentation, including videos from GNOME themselves as to how to get around this desktop. And I think that's, uh, again, it's one of those things that is just indicative of why this move to GNOME is good in the long term. Because Ubuntu can throw resources behind an upstream project and help, um, and help develop and perfect uh, something that was already up and running. They're not trying to spend all their time and resources on, uh, on creating something of their own. Now, having said that, we are running more or less the latest GNOME release, GNOME 3.28, but there are elements, I believe, of GNOME 3.26 uh, here, like being able to have desktop icons, being able to add folders and uh, so forth and so on to the desktop, because that has been taken out of the upstream release of GNOME 3.28. Um, now, if that doesn't mean anything to you, that's fine, we'll move on. But for those of you who do, you will also know that, uh, that Ubuntu has been rocking the same default look and feel for quite a while now. Actually, quick side note, I do like the way that they've kind of redesigned a little bit of this file manager. Um, again, file managers, how long do we spend in them these days? Uh, we actually, well, I don't know about you, I still spend quite a bit of time in a file manager. So giving something that we see every day a bit of love, I'm always down for that. Um, is it is it user-friendly? Um, I guess. It, I don't really see it takes away any functionality from what it was before, but let me know what you think below. Um, yeah, the file manager is what it is. But what I was going to say was that the look and feel of Ubuntu hasn't really changed. Um, fundamentally, it hasn't really shifted since Ubuntu 10.10, .10, I think, where they refined the ambience and radiance themes that debuted in 10.04 back in, that was eight years ago, ladies and gentlemen, that was a long time ago. Um, so that kind of, that should, that should be indicative. Um, pretty much every major software platform out there has undergone a major visual overhaul in the last eight years. Ubuntu, it's getting there in bits and pieces, but most of that we can owe to GNOME and GNOME updating the way it looks and, uh, and the way that, you know, uh, the, the, the user interface uh, acts and responds, graphically speaking. Um, that was a really weird sentence. So the look and feel of Ubuntu is in dire need of an update. Um, there is an update in the works. It did not make it to the LTS release. Um, and I think there are two sides of the discussion here. Um, on one side of the fence, you've got the the uh, those that would say that an LTS release is needs to be as buttoned down as uh, as ship shape as tight as as possible with min uh, with minimal bugs or um, the software needs to be very very stable and tested and and tried and true in order for it to make it in an LTS release and I definitely understand that line of argument absolutely 
Um, then there is the other side of the fence, and this is kind of where I personally sit. Absolutely, you want the software buttoned down, you want it to be stable, you want it to be uh, responsive, and you want it to be able to last for a good couple of years installed on a, on a desktop or a server. But at the same time, it's a great opportunity to, uh, to debut uh, features or looks and feels that, uh, that are going to make a statement about the operating system, where it's going, and, uh, and announcing uh, its, itself to the world and its development to the world. Because LTS releases are the ones that IT managers sit up and pay attention to. They're the ones that are considered for um, you know, government, not-for-profit sectors. So having something that is uh, that kind of creates a break with the past or creates at least a, a reinvention or a reincarnation of something that has, uh, that has been known for a long time. I think taking the opportunity to do that um, in, in an LTS release is something that is worth doing. Um, and you will remember the, the LTS release of Ubuntu 10.04 was, uh, was one of the most iconic Ubuntu releases because it did away with the grungy brown feel and it introduced this fresh modern ambience and radiance theme. And yes, that has evolved over the years, but right now we're sitting with a theme that's eight years old and it's disappointing that, uh, that it's just not here in the LT, LT, in the LTS release. Ugh, I couldn't get that out. Okay, so let's move on to uh, talk about software. Software, I think, is and this is this is where I come to a fundamental point in my in my evaluation of Ubuntu. Now, the Ubuntu Software Center, I have. Um, I've had a rough relationship with. The previous iteration of Ubuntu Software Center was getting pretty ancient, and um, and it was definitely reminiscent of a time long before uh, modern package management uh, with snap packages and uh, flat pack packages. Um, so I am very, very happy to see that snap uh, packages are integrated into the Ubuntu Software Center, making the discoverability of the software that most people want to use on a day-to-day -day basis right here on the front page. I think that is a great thing. The ability to install a lot of this stuff that I actually do use, a lot of these apps on a daily basis, the fact that I can see them on the front page ready to go uh, is fantastic. Obviously, we've still got a ways to go here in terms of ratings and screenshots and all of that kind of thing, um, but it's a start. And, uh, and it's great to see that there is, uh, it makes more sense to have a centralized one location that you go looking for all of your software. Um, now, unfortunately though, we've got to pair this with the traditional Ubuntu package management paradigm of having a distribution whose core software stays relatively stagnant, uh, gets security updates over the life of the OS, and then the software packages that come through on top uh, if you want to keep up to date with the bleeding edge of those of those packages, let's say LibreOffice, for example, you're not going to see those updates in that package uh, or in an Ubuntu LTS release unless the Ubuntu team decide that they're going to port through the updates and, uh, and bring them to the LTS release. Otherwise, you need to add a PPA and manage it manually. Um, now, if you're watching this video at this point and going, what the heck is he talking about? It's just talking about where you get your software from. Uh, and whether you have to bolt on extra places yourself to pull more up-to-date software or whether the system manages it all for you. Um, I guess we're at a point now where I feel, technologically speaking, that we are at a place where you can run a stable Linux distribution that does roll to some degree so that you never have to reinstall an operating system. You never have to install like a service pack update that completely um, changes the way your system works. I feel like we're at a stage where technologically we can pull off a rolling release, meaning that the core software that your system runs on um, can be tested, it can be trialed, and then it rolls out in stages. This is the way that we see uh, Android, iOS, Windows, all of these other operating systems moving is towards this rolling model of, uh, of, of iterative change over time um, to add value to the OS uh, as it matures. So that brings me to my final point. Looking at Ubuntu and the 18.04 release looks like it'll be a, you know, a relatively polished, um, iterative, uh, slow build on the 17.10 release. If you have not used Ubuntu since Ubuntu 16.04, it does represent a pretty significant change. 
But at the end of the day, I ask myself, where, what is the purpose of Ubuntu today? Ubuntu definitely is one of the most popular, if not the most popular Ubuntu, uh, sorry, Linux release for desktop users in the world. I don't know how much of that is, uh, I don't know how much of that, we don't actually have any hard statistics there. I know Ubuntu is doing fantastic in the cloud computing realm and on backend uh, servers and stuff like that, because honestly, that's where Linux shines. Um, but in the desktop space, I'm not sure if Ubuntu is the, is the desktop release that everybody's hankering for these days, because honestly, I feel like there are better technological options out there that do a better job with design, do a better job with backend package management, do a better job with stability, do a better, I don't know. These are just my thoughts. Um, and feel free, you know, if, if Ubuntu is your jam and you cannot wait for 18.04 to, to go stable, let me know in the comments below. And, uh, and I'm excited just as much as any other person can be with a big Linux release coming out. But is it past its prime? Where does Ubuntu sit in terms of computing, desktop computing today? I guess I'll just leave you with that question. Let me know in the comments. If, this, if you found this video helpful, uh, then definitely smash that like button and uh, subscribe if you like this kind of conversation. And uh, I will see you in the very next video. In the meantime, go check out Ubuntu 18.04, uh, submit some bugs, and uh, it'll be a happy day. Catch you later, everyone.